Good afternoon. <laughs> My name is Margaret Chin, and I am the chair of the Committee on Aging. I would like to thank my fellow committee members and the council staff for coming together to hold this hearing. Today's hearing will provide the committee with an opportunity to discuss and evaluate naturally occurring retirement communities, also known as NORCs in the city. The vast majority of older adults express a clear preference to age in place, that is, remain in their residence or community as they grow older. However, many seniors require additional services and accommodations in order to do so. NORCS permits our city senior to age in place by establishing partnership between housing entity or particular neighborhoods, social service providers, health providers, and NORC residents themselves. These partnerships work together to monitor seniors' needs and provide flexible and responsive services to NORC residents before crisis intervention is necessary. As of fiscal year 2016, there are 53 publicly funded NORCs in the city. These NORCs receive funding from either the state, the Department for the Aging, also known as DIFTA, or the council or from a combination of state and city funds. 28 NORCs in the city are funded through contracts with DIFTA, while 25 receive funding from the council. In addition, 14 NORCs receive funding from both DIFTA and the state. In recent years, as council members learn more about NORCs and the benefits and service they provide to our city seniors, the committee has seen increased interest from members regarding the establishment of NORCs in their districts. For example, in fiscal year 2015, council member Debbie Rose, she's a member of this committee, and council member Donovan Richard expressed interest in establishing NORCs in their district. Feasibility studies for both districts were then funded and are currently in the process of being conducted. Given the increased interest in NORCs, Coupled with the growing senior population in New York City, it is our responsibility to ensure that government agencies such as DIFTA are adequately prepared to provide services to our growing senior population. This hearing will provide the committee with an opportunity to discuss the upcoming changes to the New York State Elder Law with respect to NORCs and how these changes will affect the NORCs in New York City, particularly the 14 NORCs that receive funding from both the state and DIFTA, as well as identify areas for improvement and expansion of NORCs in the future. I want to thank the council members on the committee who have joined us today, Council Member Rose, uh, and I also want to thank our new council on the Aging Committee, uh, Caitlin Fahey, on her first hearing. And I wanted to thank Emily Rooney and Dohini Sapura. Without further ado, um, the council will square, uh, swear in our first panel from the Department of Aging. So we invite up uh, Carolyn Resnick, Deputy Commissioner for External Affairs, and Karen Taylor, Assistant Commissioner, Borough of Community Services. Do you affirm to tell the whole truth, the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth in your testimony before this committee, and to respond honestly to council member questions? Yes. 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 Okay. Good afternoon, Chairperson Chen and members of the committee. I'm Karen Taylor, Assistant Commissioner for the Bureau of Community Services at the New York City Department for the Aging, or DIFTA. And I'm joined today by Karen Resnick, Deputy Commissioner for External Affairs, and Laudry Lamadou, Deputy Assistant Commissioner in the Bureau of Community Services. On behalf of Commissioner Corrado, I would like to thank you for this opportunity to discuss naturally occurring retirement communities, or NORC programs. The term naturally occurring retirement community 
describes a demographic phenomenon as it was coined, or it was coined in the 1980s by a professor of architecture at the University of Wisconsin when he observed that certain housing communities had evolved into communities with a large concentration of older people. Definitions vary somewhat throughout the country, but naturally occurring retirement communities are defined in New York City, principally through their geographic boundaries and their population of seniors. The city has defined NORCs as residential locations, either single buildings, housing developments, or clusters of buildings within a neighborhood that are neither age restricted nor built specifically for seniors. Over time, as res residents have aged in place, their housing locations have become home to significant concentrations of older adults. Now, throughout the last two decades, a number of these North communities have organized their efforts to provide supportive services to senior residents and have, seek, have sought and received funding from city and state programs as well as private foundations. These programs are called NORC Supportive Service Programs, or NORC SSPs or NORC programs. DIFTA funded NORC programs are structured to promote shared financial and oversight responsibility as well as collaborative participation in program design and operation through a partnership among NORC residents, the NORC housing entity, a social services provider, and a healthcare provider. As we're all aware, housing is a primary concern for seniors in New York City. Most older New Yorkers do prefer to continue living in their present homes and communities as they grow older, as uh, Chairwoman Chin just pointed out. As the population of older New Yorkers contins, uh, continues to increase, homes and communities become more and more important in the aging process as well. So ready access to a range of coordinated support services and opportunities is essential for successful aging in place. The NORC SSPs are among the full, um, are among the full range of DIFTA funded services that address the preference of seniors to age safely in their own houses and communities and respond to their consequent support needs. The NORC program movement actually began here, right, he right here in New York City. Throughout the 1980s and 90s, the need for services in NORCs became more and more apparent as residents and housing management in a number of New York City housing developments began to realize that the older resident population in their community was growing and that some senior neighbors needed assistance with daily activities. Some of the early efforts to address this growing concern included on-site volunteer programs that gained a strong foothold in the housing community even before public funding was available and collaborations between forward-thinking housing boards and housing managers and service providers also emerged, which often received needed support from philanthropic funders, and in 1960, uh, 1986, a consortium of UJA Federation agencies established the first such NORC SSP in the nation at the Penn South Program for Seniors. In all cases, however, housing providers as invested partners have been and continue to be the fundamental to the success of an on-site supportive service program. These early efforts thrived and grew rapidly, and in fiscal year 2000, the city appropriated funding for a New York City NORC initiative. One of the hallmark, essential hallmarks of the NORC program model is a match requirement. So public dollars leverage private funding and contributions from a number of committed stakeholders, including the housing entity, the healthcare provider, and the philanthropic community. This support has been critical in allowing NORC SSPs to flourish, enhance services, and complement city funding. And I would add, it has also been critical in allowing these programs to actually tailor their program to the needs of the specific community. There are five primary objectives for DIFTA-funded NORC programs. All NORC programs funded by the department should provide supportive environments that allow seniors independence as they age, engage residents and facilitate linkages within the community, assess the needs of older residents, offer support services based on assessments, and build strong and meaningful communities that cultivate new roles for community members. 
to strengthen the NORC network in providing supportive services and facilitating community engagement, DIFTA issued a request for proposals in June of 2013 to serve buildings or housing developments with a senior population of 350 or more, in which 40% or more of the households included a senior, or a housing development with 1,500 or more seniors, regardless of the percentage of households they occupy. In January 2014, DIFTA awarded 28 NORC contracts in the Bronx, Brooklyn, and Manhattan, and Queens for a term that began in July of 2014. The FY18 DIFTA budget for these NORC programs is $6.7 million. DIFTA continues to fund the current NORC program model, described, uh, which is really described as a classic NORC. These communities are located in public housing, low to moderate income co-ops, and low to moderate private rentals. The NORC contract awards include funding to enhance services such as case management for homebound and non-homebound seniors, assistance with accessing public benefits, and increased emphasis on wellness, chronic disease risk assessments, and healthcare management. As a growing number of older adults age in place, and in response to broad-based community efforts, to meet the needs of this population, NORC models continue to develop and evolve. We are pleased that the Council allocated a total of $3.85 million in the adopted budget for FY18 to fund NORC, uh, to fund NORC services. DIFTA looks forward to the continued partnership with the Council to support the overall NORC network and its capacity to enhance the lives of seniors. Thank you again for this opportunity to testify on NORC services and we're pleased to answer any questions you may have. Thank you for your testimony. Uh, we have also been joined by Councilmember Deutsch from Brooklyn. Welcome. Um, I'm going to start off with a couple of questions, and I'm going to pass it on to my colleagues. Um, does DIFTA have any uh, data on how many older adults are right now being served at the DIFTA's contracted NORCs? Uh, how many are served in each borough, and then uh, any information on the demographic uh, of the senior that are served by the DIFTA contract in NORCs? We do. Um, I don't have that data here available, but we can certainly get, get that for you. Yeah, if you could uh, share that with us. Mm -hmm. um, what kind of service uh, does DIFTA find are the most in demand in the, in, in the NORC services? Well, again, we'd need to see data, but I would take a wild stab and Laudry confirm that I believe um, the, um, the casework services, health care management and health man and uh, case management, and we actually do have some numbers here. Um, the NORC program, programs all provide a form of case management to their um, you know, to their, their clients, which is one of the, the core services. And then there is healthcare management, which is a service that's unique to the NORC programs. It's similar to case management, but provided by a healthcare professional. And those, I think, are probably the two um, most um, utilized services, in addition to which we have um, a variety of health uh, promotion programs as well. And did you want to add something? So case management is um, the service that I think that we find are, are utilized the most. Mm. Okay. So, I mean, does DIFTA monitor the, because you talked about the different health service, do you monitor the health indicator programs um, to, that ensures that all the DIFTA um, contracts, NORCs, provide the services? We do. We monitor, um, the, an assessment is performed. Health indicators is um, a process that is also part of the assessment and is, is also reviewed. Um, for, and we provide a, num a lot of assistance, actually, to programs in how to best use both health indicators and other data that they gather from clients to inform decisions about programming. So can you just give us a little bit um, better idea in terms of the specific requirement uh, of the health indicator program? What does it entail? Sure. Um, there's a survey that has been developed that is available to the NORC programs and um, 
a couple of years ago, we worked with the programs to come up with a, um, a good basic sample that of, uh, of clients that would be needed to be surveyed in order to get sort of a good, I a, a good idea and a general idea of the NORC community and its health risks. And Health Indicators is a tool that's really used, it can be used in different ways, but it's used mostly to look at an overall community and to see what the trends are. Is this a community where there is a high prevalence of diabetes or a high prevalence of heart disease or uh, seniors who are falling and so forth? So uh, we, would, we have looked and the programs did comply with this to do uh, surveys. And then what they would do is look at the data and if they, for instance, if uh, falls seem to be, or prevalence of falls seem to be one of the leading indicators that they found during the survey, then we would work with them to make sure that they instilled programming in the center or in the, uh, in the NORC program to address falls, both by linking up with those particular individuals that were at risk as well as providing those kinds of services to the entire community. So have you seen um, evaluations or like kind of uh, success stories from some of the NORCs? Like they, after they did the survey and they provided these program, did they come back and say, hey, well, a, a year later, um, the seniors are, are healthier or less seniors are all having problem with accidents and things we're, like that? We're at a point where after the first batch of surveys, um, the programs have implemented a number of primarily evidence-based health promotion programs. So what we would be doing is we would, that information we would be starting to collect, I would say, in the near future. But we don't have the outcome information at this point, at least not on the, not on the grand scale. Some individual programs may have that. I think it's so important to really collect those data because oftentimes we go out there and we say, look, we're providing these NORC programs, senior center, and the senior who partic participate in these programs, they're healthy and they're stronger and they're saving government money in the long run. It's an investment um, that we put in now that will yield great results. So it would be great to be able to show showcase that um, and really uh, use that um, to, get, to gather more uh, support on, 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 on this program. Now, in your testimony, you also uh, talk about we have um, you know, a growing senior population and, and the seniors, you know, oftentimes they do want to stay uh, in the building that they live in for 30, 40 years or in their community. So how is DIFTA uh, prepare um, to really take this up and to provide the services that's needed. I mean, NORC is a, is a wonderful program. So it's just sort of like getting ready or you have uh, a plan in place how to expand this program as the senior population grow? Well, I, you know, DIFTA, NORC is just one program that DIFTA provides for seniors. And even though it's very successful in some of the communities where it has, uh, where funding has been provided and, and Good providers have come together. Um, it's not necessarily the only program that's needed. Uh, there's a there's a wide range of services, be the case management, certainly senior centers, and a more expansive version of senior centers, which we've implemented through the innovatives. Um, so, I think you know with NORCs, you know besides the fact that there's with additional funding, we'd be very pleased to look at other options as well, but. Um, I think we need to look at the whole array of services in that context instead of just NORC programs because as senior, I mean the whole city, there's so many areas in the city which would technically qualify as a NORC, but that doesn't mean that they have sort of the grassroots and the community um, mobilization that would be required to set up this kind of partnership and maybe they'd be better served by having a different kind of program. So I think the department is always looking to the future. We're certainly, every, every you know, the, there will be another NORC RFP in several years and we'll start to think through how we can maybe expand uh, the way we address seniors' needs as they're growing older. So I think we're always looking to that. I don't have specifics for you on 
where and when and how, but, uh, but that's certainly always on our minds. I mean, looking at the new, um, the amendment to the state elders law, right? So there is gonna be mm -hmm. some change which makes it in some ways easier uh, to start a NOAC program. And just knowing from my colleagues in the city council, there are a lot of interests uh, in really doing that. And we have sort of like pilot projects that the council uh, is supporting on a smaller scale. But going forward, I mean, it, this is, it is a great model where people can access the, the program right in the building or right in their neighborhood. Um, and we don't have enough senior centers for the whole city. <laughs> I mean, we have only 277. Um, okay. And that's why we have all these social adult daycare that's popping up, that, that's my beef, right? There, it's like my complaint. They're popping up all over the city because there is a need. Mm -hmm. So in the North program, we have um, really great models that are doing well. Uh, I think it's really uh, important to sort of look at how we could expand this program because the last RFP did not cover a lot of the NORCs that did apply and the council had to pick up through discretionary funding. Um, but we want to really see this program expand and I hope that we could work with DIFTAS to sort of, you know, mm -hmm. plan ahead in terms of where in the city and working together with the council member to see that we can start some new NOC program and then get them funding that, you know, to support them down the road. I think we'd be happy to do that. And I think the, the, the critical factor that you mentioned is that the impetus for the really su successful programs started in the community and not from outside the community. So it's really important that we get that information from the communities themselves and we can start to to work with that and also to provide information on how communities can start doing things without you know pre-funding so to speak to get better better organized okay i think one of the things that we probably when councilman rose we probably would have to work with you to start doing more um education information how people can get started because i have one um in the low east side that we were able to support um in the last uh, to budget in Council Member Mendez district. And because the senior came to testify at a budget hearing, and they talk about they started with some private funding, uh -huh. and uh, it's sort of like a concept of a neighborhood NORC because it's tenement building, right. uh, and then they have a, a senior building. So we were able to provide extra funding last year, mm -hmm. and we hope to uh, continue to support them. And, uh, and that's, you know, we want to see more of that throughout the city. Yeah. Uh, Council Member Rose, you want to have some questions? Thank you. Thank you, Chair um, Chin. I want to first start by thanking uh, my colleague and Chair um, Chin for all of her support, um, which resulted in uh, Staten Island's Rosebank community becoming um, a neighborhood north. Um, and Staten Island, like Queens, is in a very sort of different situation because we have a lot of homeowners um, as opposed to tall uh, buildings with a lot of residents. So I, I really appreciate that we were able to sort of configure our neighborhood NORC into something that um, fits this model. But I was wondering, is there any ongoing effort to identify communities that are that would be eligible to be NORCs? Um, how does a community come to your attention to even uh, start that process? Well, we have demographic data on various communities. Um, by having the, when I said, you know, it's important to get the, um, the impetus for the program from the community. It really means that the stakeholders, from the stakeholders in the community, um, that they, and we have been approached many times by um, either community boards or nonprofit organizations or seniors themselves saying, I live in a building and I'd like to know more, more, about, more about NORCs. So I think that uh, that is really what we're meaning. I mean, we, 
we do not have an active uh, outreach to every community that could be could qualify as a, as a NORC because part of the uh, basic requirement is that there does need to be partnership and so we really would want to work with the stakeholders in that community. So uh, although you have the data that um, supports demographic, um, the demographic data supports that a, a NORC could be a possibility or would benefit, be beneficial to a certain community, um, that doesn't drive you to initiate an, an action. We have data on demographics. It doesn't necessarily mean that a NORC is the appropriate um, service need in that community, that there, as I, uh, as I mentioned, we have a, num a whole array of other kinds of services as well. So the demographics only talk about how many seniors live in a certain geographical area, which is where you start, for sure. Um, but beyond that, there are, every community is very different, and there are different needs, so we really have to look at the specifics of each community. But I'm, I'm really trying to um, determine sort of the driver. Um, the demographics uh, su support that maybe a community could benefit from being a NORC, or um, is there any, at any point that you assess the data that you have to determine what would work for specific, you know, communities where the demographics support um, being eligible for a program that might be directed out of DIFTA? Not, a, not as such, no. I mean, the, the driver comes from, you know, again, either a the stakeholder community, yes, or, community board. or someone or... Um, or a representative of the community, you know, coming to us or responding to um, a notice of funding available or, or, you know, some sort of mechanism or just asking for information. That is how we get that information. It's too... Um, I am, yeah. yeah. So could, um, could you give me an update on our neighborhood, NORC? To the, yes, to the extent that we... Um, we can. Um, we've been in touch with CASC, of course, who is the mm -hmm. not-for-profit uh, provider, and I know that they're, you know, as you pointed out, uh, and this is a very important thing that I think you pointed out, uh, Council Member Rose, is that, um, you know, each community is different, and Staten Island has some different challenges than the dense high-rises in Manhattan or, or elsewhere. And I think the neighborhood NORC, which is not something that the city has permanent funding for at this point, and therefore we don't have a, a totally flushed out model uh, for neighborhood NORC, but the neighborhood NORC concept, uh, I think, has been, uh, it's, it's very needed and it's very challenging in that you're not working with uh, one housing management or one entity or a building where everybody lives together. And I think the what we've been uh, getting reports from CASC about are some of those challenges with homeowners and who, you know, how you get to the organization of homeowners and uh, residents that are in this community. And that some of these services are very different. There have been some great successes out there. Um, I think you will... I think you... I think you will probably hear later from some other testifiers about certain programs, but we've had uh, the Visiting Nurse Service has, has worked with uh, CASC. They have um, done, uh, what is part of their shingles education program has been done there. They, there have been educational presentations to seniors at senior housing facilities in this area of Staten Island. There has been a needs assessment survey, which I think was the first thing that CASC did for the area. And they continue to do outreach events in senior facilities, including neighborhood churches and senior centers. And I think it, right now they're planning to extend services to homeowners in the area to try to offer educational workshops on home safety and minor repairs and the kinds of things that really are needed for the, home, the, the low income and the needy homeowner aging homeowner community who also want to remain in their homes, which is very often quite challenging. Thank you. Are we um, looking at how to sort of address the challenges that, you know, our very unique NORC uh, 
Um, I think, yes, in certainly in partnership. Uh, well, as I said, it's a partnership. The CASC in partnership with the department and in partnership with you and your office and the other community stakeholders are bringing together the kinds of solutions that the community needs and, and trying to um, understand and find out how to address them. Okay, thank you. Um, follow up on the question with, count, uh, with the, the North and Staten Island. There's the changes in the new uh, state law, mm -hmm. right? With that, do you see that helping to facilitate creating, you know, more neighborhood Newark and also uh, the state coming up with more funding to support uh, neighborhood Newarks? Sure. I mean, it's possible. <laughs> uh, they, <laughs> since we don't, uh, I, let's see, I don't know uh, how many neighborhood Newarks will ultimately be funded in New York City, but we have, um, and I believe the state projects 12 statewide neighborhood norks out of this, out of their new funding. Um, and I think we, well, the council provides quite, quite a few. So I don't know, but I imagine it would certainly open up opportunities and I would imagine that many of those norks have applied, though I don't have that information. But I think with, I mean, with the city, with DIFTA sort of kind of use um, the state guideline to help sort of like define uh, what, um, Criterias. If we uh, had funding, if we had funding to do neighborhood works, um, we well, it, when we when we received the original funding in back in 1999 and 2000, we started with the state model because it had been very successful, and we reviewed it and we adapted it for some of the special needs and uh, more inclusion for New York City. Uh, North communities, and I imagine we'd follow some something of the same process if we had neighborhood North funding. Um, okay, that was one of the sorts of funding that we were um, asking the administration in terms of our year of the senior budget. Mm -hmm. um, that was not included, uh, but the council continued to support NORC funding. Mm -hmm. But that is something going forward that we will um, continue to push on because I think we do see this as an area of expansion mm -hmm. uh, because we do have a lot of great models of NORCs um, in different community. And hopefully by next year, the Staten Island NORC will be you know, up and running. Um, and then my colleagues want to create more. So we do want to have a, a stream of funding to be able to support that. And if the state is only talking about creating 12 statewide, I mean, it's not going to be that helpful to us. So we got to take the lead. <laughs> I think we have to like um, really look at uh, a source of funding for next year to, for us to really expand on that program. Because all the NORC that did not make it to the RFP the council is still supporting with discretionary funding, but we really need to get them uh, into the baseline pot of money and to see this as a growing area and we would have to do more education and sort of like uh, educate the mayor and the deputy mayor uh, in terms of the importance of NORC. And I look forward to working with all the advocates uh, on doing that. We are also been joined by Council Member Traeger from Brooklyn. Council Member Doyle, do you have any questions? Yeah, real quick question. Um, now, with the with the mayors and the city councils, the ZQA uh, initiative with the affordable housing uh, for uh, senior housing. Um, now, in these areas, uh, if when the city builds such um, developments and senior housing, they they're not required to have any type of space facility inside, as far as I know, for seniors. So how does the uh, Department of Aging collaborate with such a future plan in order to make sure that those needs are met? I mean, I don't have an exact answer to that question, but um, you know, I can tell you historically, for example, in Section 202 housing, there was not funding that went along to provide community services, although many have small community spaces. And we have been working with HPD, and I would expect that we would do this moving forward to look for opportunities where, at minimum, we could recite 
centers that are in not good facilities into a community space in a new building, which would really be ideal. Um, without additional funding, which of course, you know, would be the best solution, um, we could move resources in the community where we, we, we know we have facility issues in many of our centers. So that is one opportunity we look forward to. Um, I just wanted to have a follow-up question in terms of the, the change in the, the state uh, elder law, in terms of um, the number of requirements for the neighborhood NORC actually has decreased for the, I mean, okay, for the classic NORC. In the state? Yeah. I mean, the, the, num the, uh, the number of uh, Residents required to qualify? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes, I think. Uh, From 350 to 250? That's a decrease. Where was that? Well, 250 here. I'm not sure. Our requirement was 350. I am not sure what their previous requirement was at the state level, but they have. They have changed it to 250 uh, residents of an apartment building or older adults, or 500 residents yeah. of a housing mm -hmm. complex or older adults. So is the, so is the city going to also uh, do that to change the requirement going forward? We'll review that when we start to look at our next RFP. We actually reduced the threshold for the last RFP uh, in an attempt to be more inclusive. Um, it, we want to make sure that there's a, a density that makes sense in terms of having a real community, um, but we can cert we'll certainly be looking at all of those factors when we start to develop the next RFP. Okay, I think that would be important because uh, we just want to make sure that as much as possible that we can help um, make it easier for a community that do want to mm -hmm. organize NORC in their neighborhood and to be able to do that. And I know that we, in the pipe, we have quite a few in the pipeline uh, for my you know, council member. And I even have a big housing complex in Chinatown, Confucius mm -hmm. Plaza. I mean, they have a growing aging population and they're interested um, in becoming a NORC. Um, and so we've, we have a lot to do, and, but funding is important. Mm -hmm. We've and, actually, I mean, we've, we've developed some pretty flexible ways to address that. We have one NORC program in, uh, in Manhattan, in Upper Manhattan, that actually consists of three buildings. And collectively, they make a NORC, and they work together. Their <laughs> boards work together, and there are services in each of the buildings, and together they qualify, and they're within a, a very short distance of each other. And you know, so we're, we're happy to work with communities on those kinds of thresholds to make it more rational. That's good. I mean, we would just want to have all kinds of creative model and not just have to have yeah. certain, you know, strict restriction. Uh, Council Member Traeger, do you have any uh, questions, suggestions? Do you want a NORC in your district? <laughs> well, we have Warbass NORC, uh, yes. but I, I would certainly, uh, and I want to give a shout out to them. They, they've done great work, and I would just echo the, the comments of my colleagues that resources are, are critical. I just want to just uh, say one more time with regards to um, uh, emerging communities with uh, rapidly growing immigrant communities, seniors, uh, the need is only growing, and it's growing at, at a rampant rate. So, and we want to be partners, and I know the budget has just been completed, and again, the council, thanks to our senior champion, Margaret Chin, uh, has, we've, we've done better, but there's more work to do. And, and, and this is one of these areas where uh, it's not just about making sure, we're just recognizing that there are certain pockets of the city that are growing rapidly um, and just matching, aligning the resources to meet, meet those needs. I just wanted just to echo those comments. And I thank the chair for her time. Thank you, Council Member Traeger. Um, yeah, because we've been the council, we have you know, funded initiative to support uh, senior center that serves immigrant population, 
uh, we hope that in the next uh, RFP that we will be able to get some of this, the center that we're supporting with this discretionary funding to be able to get them uh, into the senior center portfolio. Uh, and since the administration baseline, $10 million to help right size senior uh, centers, we are gonna build on that uh, to make sure that our senior center are adequately funded. And the NORC is something that we will have to uh, work on for the next uh, fiscal year to make sure that we have new baseline funding. So when we do the RFP for the NORC, uh, we can cover a lot more uh, NORCs in our community and we can also start creating more uh, in the city because I think this is such a wonderful model and we want to be able to uh, build on it and we look forward to working with you and with DIFTA uh, to do that. Uh, so um, let's see. Okay, it's, um, do you have uh, someone specifically in uh, DIFTA that community can contact if their neighborhoods, um, groups, or uh, kind of building complex that want to get involved with uh, starting a NORC? Yes, um, we can contact my deputy, Laundry Lamadou. <laughs> okay. We so can give you, we'll send you that information. Okay, yes. thank you. Okay, so thank you for testifying, and thank you for uh, your support of our community. So we're gonna call up the next panel. Jan Orsak from uh, Union Settlement Nork at Franklin Plaza. Nicole Tambini, PEP for Senior Nork. Carmen Perez, director of the Cooper Square Committee, NORC, and uh, Nora Moran, United Neighborhood Houses. Do we have enough chairs? Yes. Exiting, we're still in session. Thank you. Okay, we've been joined by Council Member Rosie Mendez. Um, you may begin. We'll... Okay, better. My name is Jan Orzek, and I'm the director of the Union Settlement NORC at Franklin Plaza in East Harlem. Prior to starting this brand new NORC in 2014, I was the director of the Elliott Chelsea NORC under the auspices of Hudson Guild. I'm also a licensed clinical social worker. As you may be aware, uh, NORCs are highly effective programs. Their mission is to help seniors age in place by providing services and activities right on site. I believe NORCs are, or should be, the future of aging because everybody benefits. Research has shown that seniors overwhelmingly prefer to remain in their homes and in their communities, and society benefits by the contributions they continue to make to these communities, and also because NORCs are relatively inexpensive to run and hugely cheaper than placing seniors in institutions. The main strategy utilized by NORCs to help seniors remain in their homes is the provision of social services. When you ask that question of DIFTA, I can, I can uh, verify that case management is the most important service that is being requested. Um, 
This can be viewed narrowly as providing help with applications for benefits and entitlements such as SNAP, SCREE, Meals on Wheels, and the like, or broadly such as helping seniors overcome social isolation, elder abuse, family problems, substance abuse, and the depression, anxiety, and trauma that may interfere with their compliance with medical regimens and otherwise taking care of themselves. Assisting with these higher level services requires the specialized skill and training provided by master's level social workers trained not only in the diagnosis and treatment of mental health issues, but also in working with the families and other systems that must be tapped to provide a network of services to older adults who are frail or have dementia, and especially to those who are not eligible for Medicaid and thus cannot receive many benefits and entitlements, most importantly, home health care. And because most of our seniors resist referrals to mental health services, the NORC staff serves as their only and best shot at mental health treatment. And let me preface this by saying that the, NORC, the maximum NORC budget for a classical NORC um, is the same now in this last round of RS RFPs as it was in my old NORC eight years ago. So services, uh, finances have not increased for, for social services. They have stayed the same for NORCs in general. When I began my job at the Elliott Chelsea NORC in 2009, the NORC's permanent social work staff consisted of one MSW level social worker and one non-MSW who was a bilingual, bilingual case manager. The case manager dealt with all of the seniors who were monolingual, monolingual Spanish speakers. This meant that non-Hispanic clients who saw the MSW got a higher level of service than the Spanish speakers. One MSW case manager and one non-MSW case manager who saw only the Spanish speaking clients. So over time and with staff changes, uh, we were able to not only provide MSW social workers for both populations, but also added a third MSW who spoke Chinese and was funded by a grant. In my current NORC, which has 1,000 seniors, we started the program in 2014 with one MSW and two non-MSWs because that's what the budget allowed. Their salaries are at the low end of the scale for case managers. The one MSW social worker left after two years to take a job with an insurance company. That paid her $20,000 more than we could offer. In her place, we had to hire a non-MSW case manager because no MSWs, even recent graduates, would take a salary so low. That also means that the NORC director, whose salary is also below market rates, has to be an experienced clinician in order to supervise a non-professional staff and has to spend a great deal of time supervising them. The low salary of the director also makes it hard to attract and keep qualified applicants. And I say this with no vested interest because I'm retiring in 17 days, so I was involved in the hiring of my replacement and I know what the, what's out there in the market and who's applying. Fortunately, we got somebody great but it was not easy. As you may know, the NORC model is based on a collaboration between social service provider and a healthcare provider. Also, as mentioned, the housing development. Um, in a similar vein, because there is insufficient money in the NORC budget to pay nurses at market rates, it is difficult to get and to keep qualified nurses to assist clients with managing their healthcare. Because of this, there's been high turnover. In the eight years I've been a NORC director, I believe I've worked with eight nurses. Um, they stay, don't stay longer than a year. Um, at leading to clients' reluctance to access the service because of the frequent turnover. In this era of kicking people out of hospitals before they are ready, community-based nursing services are more important than ever. We are the boots on the ground that can provide prevention, ensure follow-up and compliance with a discharge plan, and help seniors manage their health on an ongoing basis. In sum, NORC budgets need to be increased so that staff can be hired who can provide the highest level of service to this vulnerable and underserved population that comprises an ever-increasing segment of our city. 
This relatively small investment will in turn save our city money by helping older adults avoid hospitalizations and keeping them out of institutions such as nursing homes. Finally, older adults have spent their whole, whole lives serving society and now deserve to live out their final years with dignity. Thank you. Hi, good afternoon and thanks for this opportunity to testify. My name is Nicole Tambini and I'm the director of the PEP for Seniors NORC in Parkchester. And uh, NORC programs are unique, of course, because they vary depending on location and population, but our mission is the same, to provide older adults with the supportive services that they need in order to safely remain in their homes for as long as possible, to enhance and coordinate services uh, available to seniors so that they can sex successfully age in place, to empower older adults and to collaborate with the community, local organizations, and our sponsoring partners to fund and coordinate quality programs and services. In short, NORCs make their communities a good place to grow old. The PEP for Seniors NORC in Parkchester serves a large and growing population of seniors over 60. According to census data, the percentage of adults over 60 in Parkchester went from 13% in 2000 to 20% in 2010. PEP is the second largest NORC in the Bronx with approximately 5,500 seniors, according to the 2010 census. We provide a variety of health-related and social services, as well as workshops, lectures, activities, trips, and volunteer opportunities. PEP offers health screenings, blood pressure monitoring, medication management, home visits, health education, case management and assistance, health management and assistance, advocacy, benefits and entitlements, information and referrals, friendly visiting, intergenerational activities, and so much more. We coordinate with our local DIFTA-funded senior center, but our services are distinct. NORCs have a reputation for being innovative, community-based grassroots programs that offer a set of services that a senior center is just not equipped to provide. We have a community health nurse that analyzes our survey data to determine what health issues are impacting the community, and then develops and implements programs to address those issues. One challenge we face with service delivery is a lack of resources. This type of evidence-based programming requires additional consultants, incentives to, con to encourage participation, additional staff time, etc. DIFTA provides us with as much funding as they can along with our partnering agencies. However, our budget remains the same for many years despite an increase in the expenses of running our program. Another challenge that most NORCs face is accessibility. NORCs were not designed to be senior housing, but our older residents need handicap accessible buildings and ramps. Parkchester is made up of 171 buildings. Only a small number are accessible. Some of our clients end up being prisoners in their own homes. Parkchester apartments are available to rent or purchase as condominiums. Selling an apartment and finding a new home when you are essentially homebound and frail is not a simple task. Transportation is another challenge that affects service delivery. Geographically, our NORC is very large. Certain parts of it are not easily accessible by public transportation, and our clients cannot walk long distances. Having a van for our program would help, help significantly, but this is a major expense, along with insurance, maintenance, a driver, parking. Accessoride could solve some of those problems, but it presents a challenge which, with eligibility criteria and very long wait times. As our seniors age, their resources dwindle. They receive very meager cost of living increases from Social Security, if at all. Rent continues to rise, and many of our clients are realizing that they can't afford to stay in Parkchester. A rent freeze program, SCREE, exists, but most are ineligible because they live in fair market apartments. These unfortunate seniors may decide to move, but senior housing wait lists are at least five to seven years long or more. In order to improve service delivery, large-scale changes need to take place within multiple city agencies. Despite having limited resources, our NORC has managed to improve quality of life for many of our older adults. The vast majority of our clients live alone with no assistance. They are not getting home care services because they are not Medicaid eligible. Our social workers are well-versed in how 
in how to use legal resources in order to make our clients eligible, thus providing them with home care that they didn't think they would ever receive. This alone produces positive results, preventing hospital admissions, avoiding nursing home placement, and literally saving lives. Our interdisciplinary team of our nurse and social workers work diligently to ensure that all the needs of our clients are met. Our NORC is indeed a safety net. With additional resources, I know our net could stretch even wider, catching all of the seniors who fall through the cracks. Thank you. Good afternoon. My name is Carmen Perez, and I'm the director of the Neighborhood NORC Program at Cooper Square Committee. The Cooper Square Committee is a tenants' rights organization in the Lower East Side of Manhattan. The Cooper Square Committee's mission is to work with area residents to contribute to the preservation development of affordable, environmentally healthy, and community cultural spaces so that Cooper Square area remains racially, economically, and culturally diverse. Through this aim, we have seen our elder population grow and thus recognize the needs of our East Village aging community by developing and shaping a program of their own design. Through a partnership among low, moderate income residents, housing management companies, and healthcare and social service providers facilitated by NORCs and neighborhood NORCs, support older residents and enable them to age in place, thrive in their communities, and delay and avoid hospitalization or nursing home placement. By providing these vital programs and resources, aging New Yorkers from low to middle income can be assured of not having to go out of their way to continue to enjoy their independence. I am delighted to be here today to testify in support of NORCs and neighborhood NORCs. NORCs provide programs and services that support a group that might otherwise fall to the cracks. NORCs provide case management, socialization programs, transportation, shopping assistance, as well as basic health services that allow seniors to remain in their homes, greatly improving their quality of life. The Cooper Square Committee NORC program, since its formation nearly uh, two years ago, has cast a wider net throughout the East Village and Lower East Side community through strong outreach networking activities such as workshops and presentations. Um, during this time, the NORC has, uh, has expanded its reach within the community and has partnered with key community stakeholders that provide both volunteers and participants. Our fledgling NORC program, thanks to the generosity of the New York City Council and the committee and the um, Department for the Aging, has allowed both Cooper Square Committee and its surrounding aging community to enjoy and partake of programs and services that they were not privy to in the past. As of now, the Neighborhood NORC provides the following services. Uh, health, legal, and benefits planning workshops. In the past year, our Neighborhood NORC has sponsored 40 workshops for seniors at three or more different sites throughout the area, with a total attendance of over 600 people. Um, topics have uh, included disaster preparedness and response, fall prevention, medication safety, depression, ageism, decluttering, health care options, alternative to high price cable subscriptions, how to create end of life documents such as wills, health care proxies, and power of attorneys. We also host special events such as the New York City ID card, um, which at the time we had an overflow crowd. More than 40 people were able to get their ID cards, and we unfortunately had to turn away some people, but we will reschedule the program at a later date. Um, in late June, we plan to sponsor along with the um, New York City um, Visiting Nurses a shingles vaccine day for seniors. Um, we also do case management and home visits. Now our social service staff only consists of a part-time employee and myself. Um, we provide one-on-one -on -one counseling and entitlement assistance for seniors 60 and over including helping them enroll in Meals on Wheels, access to Medicaid and SNAP, uh, obtain a whole health aid, apply for SCREE and DRE, apply for affordable senior housing when opportunities arise. Our NORC staff also triages with our Cooper Square Committee organizing staff so that we work with seniors who have housing problems. Uh, we have worked with a number of seniors dealing with harassment by their landlords and seniors needing help with decluttering in order to avoid eviction. 
we have utilized the services of the Educational, Allowances for, Educational Alliance for these cases. We have worked to get repairs in seniors' apartments, including uh, one particular senior whose ceilings collapsed over her. And we've, um, so overall, we uh, served over 150 seniors in the past year for case management alone. Uh, we also do social and recreational events. We also have what's called the Senior Health Advocacy and Recreational Program, or SHARP. And our SHARP committee at Cooper Square is a senior-led group that plans a lot of the workshop topics, as well as social and recreational activities for the seniors. Um, upcoming SHARP events are publicized via email, blast, and flyers. And they also have their little round robin type of communication amongst each other. Uh, this past year, SHARP members have participated in ongoing memoir writing workshops, have an eclectic assortment of social activities, including opera nights, British comedy nights, documentary film screenings. Um, they also have neighborhood and garden walks and social lunches and dinners at local restaurants that uh, offer early bird specials. Um, over 60 SHARP members have participated in these activities. In total, Cooper Square's Committee Neighborhood North Program serves over 500 unduplicated seniors per year. We aim to explore a partnership with the University Settlement to bring more services to local seniors, such as mental health counseling and visiting nurses. We plan to provide participants um, also with a North membership card and create a volunteer base that can provide isolated seniors with home visits to provide them with a stronger social network. Through additional funding um, to Cooper Square Committee and other NORCs would be vital to ensure that the NORC programs continue to provide services, particularly healthcare management services, to expand programs to culturally and linguistically underserved areas within, with increasing aging populations. Uh, in closing, it is worth noting that making stronger NORCs uh, is in the best interest of all aging New Yorkers. It maintains viability while preserving the integrity of the community. With that being said, further information and study into aging communities needs to be reassessed. The Cooper Square Committee Neighborhood NORC program is in agreement with general NORC communities to have programs in place that run efficiently, sufficiently for a healthy perspective for all of our seniors. Thank you very much. Thank you for convening today's hearing. My name is Nora Moran, and I'm a senior policy analyst at United Neighborhood Houses. We are New York City's Federation of Settlement Houses, and uh, Settlement Houses are currently coordinating 14 NORCs across New York City, uh, serving a little over 12,000 people each year, many of them in NYCHA developments, in addition to all of the other things that Settlement Houses do. Um, so we've heard a lot today from other folks about the value of NORC programs. I'll offer a couple short recommendations building off of what many of my colleagues just said. Um, first, we'd like to start by thanking the City Council and the administration for baselining nearly $23 million for the Department for the Aging in this year's budget. Um, we believe that this was a really important step to making sure that New Yorkers can age in place and remain here. And also to the City Council for renewing your support of its NORC initiative, because as you know, there are many NORC programs that that's their source of funding in order to sustain operations. So, you know, that funding is an uh, incredible lifeline for them. Um, a few recommendations that we would like to make regarding NORCs. Um, the first be uh, focusing on the healthcare services that DIFTA contracted NORCs have to provide um, because many of them struggle to offer enough nursing hours within their programs um, relating to their contracts. For many years, a lot of NORCs were able to utilize um, in kind hours that were donated by healthcare partners in order to have nurses within their programs. And because of changes in managed care, um, and other issues kind of in the healthcare system, those in-kind resources are not there as much anymore. So providers have had to you know, use other parts of their budget or draw from council discretionary dollars in order to make sure that they were offering the required number of healthcare hours that they had to. Um, so this was part of a budget request that UNH had been working on with other advocates, um, investing about a million dollars in those NORCs in order to sustain their nursing hours. So it's still an outstanding need and something that we'd love to work with the council on. 
Um, the second would be, uh, which was mentioned earlier, to expand the NORC program, the city's NORC program, to include a neighborhood NORC component. Um, you know, we know that the state has a neighborhood NORC program and that there's no, you know, DIFTA counterpart to that, even though there are areas in the city that have a lot of older adults living there and certainly could benefit from NORC services. Um, so this is something that we would love to see moving forward um, in the next fiscal year. That funding should be you know, at minimum the same as what classic NORCs are funded at, possibly more, depending on demand. Um, and you know, UNH and I'm sure other providers would love to work with the council and with DIFTA to identify those partners in order to start thinking about areas in the city um, where NORCs could be. And the last thing that we'd say is uh, ensuring that there is coordination between DIFTA and the State Office for the Aging as the state re-procures and expands its NORC program. Um, so we're expecting to hear any day now from the state as to which awards they're going to make for their recent RFP process and those new guidelines will go into effect and new contracts will go into effect January 1st, 2018. So as the state possibly increases or changes some of its reporting requirements and implements health indicator programming, we would want to see the Department for the Aging coordinating with them so that uh, we reduce the administrative burden on providers and make sure that they are you know, not having to double report and things like that, um, and that we're getting uh, the best picture from DIFTA and from NYSOFA about what's going on within NORC programs. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much for your testimony and uh, for sharing your experience with running NORC program. I'm so happy to see the one at Cooper Square, you know, up and running uh, in Councilmember Mendez District. And it's because the senior came to testify at a budget hearing. Um, and that Absolutely. sent a very strong message to all of us that we need to support um, that program. So we're really happy to see you doing well. And we agree with you that we need to get the funding to support uh, more, more NORC program. Unfortunately, this year, uh, we weren't able to get the administration to increase that budget line, but we're gonna find a way. Uh, since that they did baseline you know, a certain amount of funding, we wanna see how we can uh, be supportive of NORC. But going forward, I think in the next fiscal year, we're gonna have to focus on expanding NORC programs. Uh, Councilman Mendez, you have a comment or question? Okay, all right. Well, thank you very much uh, for coming to testify today. Say something, Madam Chair. I, I just want you guys to know that when we don't have questions, it's because your testimony is crystal clear. So thank you for being here today. Oh, uh, Molly? Krakowski from JASA, uh, Todd Fleeter, <laughs> okay, from the Bridge, Bay Bridge Center, Thomas uh, Weber from SAGE, and Sasha Kessler from Self Health Community Services. Good, how are you? Good, how are you? Good. 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 Okay, hi. Good afternoon, Molly Krakowski, Director of Legislative Affairs at JASA. Um, I wanted to just start off my testimony by thanking the members of the Aging Committee uh, for your strong support of human services contracts and for increasing the funding for the Department for the Aging in the FY18 budget negotiations. This budget is gonna have a significant impact on agencies, the staff, and the programs that are serving older New Yorkers. Um, I'm going to um, sort of jump ahead, um, but JASA is a nonprofit organization. Uh, we serve the needs of older adults throughout New York City. Uh, we have about 40,000 clients across the city in a whole range of services, including NORCs. Uh, JASA has more than 20 years of experience with classic NORC service model. Uh, we now sponsor the program or operate as subcontracted social service providers in 14 NORCs throughout New York City and Long Island. 
Uh, JASA directly sponsors five publicly funded NORC programs, one in the Bronx, four in Brooklyn, and four, um, and, uh, four programs uh, are primarily funded by DIFTA and NYSOFA, and one program is funded solely by DIFTA. Um, the classic NORC uh, programs are integrally connected to the communities in which they're located. They function as a central hub for identifying and deploying community assets to address resident needs and interests. Just as NORC's program contribute resources and vitality to make communities a better place for individuals to grow old. And in doing so, these programs support the overall strength of the community. JASA assists approximately 5,300 older adults uh, annually through its NORC programs, supporting aging in place for well and frail older adults, including those with disabilities and those living alone. We're committed to this uh, community-specific model and its unique, comprehensive, and flexible program type, offering multidisciplinary services, multiple portals for service entry, and genuine opportunities for partnership-driven community building. Perhaps most significantly, service delivery is based on needs and preference, and that is that the seniors are eligible, they move in and out of the system, sometimes they're receiving services as a, as a traditional client, sometimes they're functioning as leaders and members. They sort of take on lots of different hats, and their roles within the NORC um, shift over, um, over their time living there because they're just living in the community, um, as opposed to being a client of a service or attendee at a senior center. Um, there, these relationships are, um, are vast, um, and we are really grateful for all the representatives who support JAS and NORC programs, which includes the speaker, Mark Viverito, Council Members Chin, Deutsch, King, Reynoso, Richards, Rosenthal, and Traeger. Um, the funding um, goes a long way uh, in terms of what we're able to provide. JAS has implemented several initiatives that underscore the unique opportunities that NORC programs offer, uh, including community building, um, where we have, for example, in Co-op City, uh, what we call gatekeepers, where we've trained um, older adults to um, and, and members of the NORC team, whether they're lobby attendants, um, public safety officers, et cetera, to identify possible elder abuse, um, partnership development, um, emergency response, such as after Hurricane Sandy in um, Warbass and some of the communities out in um, vulnerable areas. Um, I want to just highlight one other area, the community health navigation, um, which uh, is an opportunity we piloted uh, around senior health and active aging. And basically, JASA's community health navigation program aims to address the disproportionately high rates of diabetes, hypertension, and preventable uh, hospitalizations in Brooklyn communities. Um, in Bushwin Highland Nork, which is in um, a, NYCHA, uh, a NYCHA center, um, We've trained community health navigators who are 65 plus. They've learned to manage their diabetes, hypertension, and related conditions, and now are committed to helping others in their community to do the same. And this is, um, you, you asked um, the Department for the Aging earlier, this is the kind of model and these are the types of things that can happen in a NORC that are really unique. Um, they're unique to the NORC model. Uh, JASA also has experience with the neighborhood NORC uh, service model. Uh, we've just completing uh, the second year of providing NORC services in the N NORC model in Far Rockaway with funding secured by Councilmember Richards. Um, it's really an important model and it's an important program touching several Rockaway uh, neighborhoods. The N NORC model allows for broad participation from community residents, but unlike the traditional classic NORC model, doesn't have the specific housing partner. And as a result, these NNORCs require significant financial commitment uh, to support outreach, engagement, and service delivery, and quite frankly, to make a dent, um, as opposed to in a building model, which is, is a little bit different, and you can see the results in a different way. Um, I want to um, just highlight one more area, which uh, I, I unfortunately didn't put it into the actual written testimony, but I've been talking a lot about salary parity. And in listening to um, some of the previous testimony and, um, and during the budget negotiations, one area that's certainly lacking is the um, parity for the workers in the NORC programs. Um, these case management um, staff are doing identical work to the case management programs um, that are funded by DIFTA, which received the increase. Um, the DIFTA-funded 
NORC programs should be um, at the same level salary-wise um, when we're talking about those staff. It is hard to retain staff. Um, it's hard to uh, find new staff to assume those roles, and, and we'd like them to be paid on par. Um, finally, there are many buildings and neighborhoods that would benefit from NORC and, and NORC models and allow older adults to age in place. Unfortunately, to build programs and expand existing models requires seed money, uh, designated funds to allow for implementation of needs assessments and neighborhood scans in communities that have high densities of older adults would support the development of new programs uh, and would allow an enhanced delivery of services. Um, as was mentioned, the nursing situation is always um, a challenge. Uh, if we don't have funding for nursing services, we take it from other areas of that budget, um, and those are the areas where the innovation is happening and some of these other um, wonderful things that come out of NORC models. So it's always about the funding. Um, the models are there. Uh, there are great programs currently in existence. There could be many more in the city, um, and we'd love to do anything to help partner and, um, and make it happen. So thank you for the budget this year. We'll push for more money next year, and, um, and parity for staff would be great. Thanks. Good afternoon, committee uh, chair Chin and esteemed committee members. My name is Todd Fleetner, and I'm deputy director of the Bay Ridge Center in Brooklyn. One thing I want you to note, um, the written testimony you have, I'm going to do an edited down version for purposes of time. Bay Ridge Center currently provides 17 distinct services through our DIFTA contracts, including both congregate and home-delivered meals to close to 700 seniors each day. This year we are featuring, thank, thanks to neighborhood NORC funding from the City Council, two new programs. In collaboration with Kingsborough Community College, we are currently offering a, an aging mastery course, which is an evidence-based program introduced by the Nas National Council on Aging. And this I am very excited about. On June 24th, we're going to do Senior Tech, which is um, uh, a special event for all of Brooklyn that will um, introduce our older adults to the vast array of new products and services which can help them age successfully in place. Bay Ridge, Brooklyn is home to more than 80,000 people, an estimated 20,000 of which are over the age of 60. In the catchment area of our neighborhood, Newark, there are more than 5,000 residents. The population aged 60 and over is 2,000, representing 40% of the population in the affected area, higher than the Kings County uh, average, which is 25%. Bay Ridge is growing and simultaneously growing older. We have received funding to develop a neighborhood NORC program from the City Council for the, uh, two consecutive years. During our first year, we identified our proposed project area, which is the area which surrounds the site of our senior center. It's ethnically diverse and is composed of a larger percentage of tenement-style houses in addition to two- and three-family houses and would be best served by a neighborhood NORC. Partnering with a uh, uh, visiting nurse Advantage, we conducted a comprehensive needs assessment survey, which you should have copies of, um, uh, and uh, to our Bay Ridge seniors with extensive outreach. We received 540 completed surveys in Arabic, Spanish, and Chinese to assure cultural competency and a diverse response. The results of that survey identified these key needs of our neighborhood seniors housing assistance services, food insecurity, financial education and benefit entitlement education and assistance, health education and fitness concerns, increased opportunities for community engagement, and inadequate transportation services. Anybody who's taken the R to Bay Ridge knows about that. Anyway, these areas present to Bay Ridge Center's neighborhood Newark clear opportunities for action a chance to impact in a meaningful and measurable way upon very real needs that are going unmet in our community. Setting up a fully funded neighborhood NORC will allow us to bridge this growing gap in service provision and tar target neighborhood NORC priority services that are germane to our clients, along with continuing to provide and coordinate existing community resources, resources into a strategic delivery system. 
Senior health has always been a consistent element of Bay Ridge Center's programming and will be a centerpiece of the neighborhood NORC. Our services have always included monitoring and referral in collaboration with key community health partners. In addition, the neighbor neighborhood NORC model offers an ideal format for new retirees and other local volunteers who want to be engaged with their community and their peers. Bay Ridge Center currently harnesses the talents of over 100 volunteers a year, and a neighborhood NORC platform will open vital pathways to increase recruitment and participation. Thanks for your time and attention. We're hoping that additional funds will allow us to uh, expand our NORC programming in New York, and you will consider granting additional funds to the Bay Ridge Center so that we can move forward with our plans to fully develop a neighborhood NORC. Thank you. Hi, my name is Sasha Kessler, and I work at Self-Help Community Services. Um, we provide uh, comprehensive social services to 20,000 older adults in New York, and including with that, we have four NORC programs that we operate in Queens. Um, we wanted to first by thank you, Council Member Chin and the members of the Aging Committee and City Council as a whole for um, your strong support and really championing this year to make sure that this became the year of the senior uh, with the new baseline uh, funding. Um, however, the lack of consistent baseline funding and adequate funding for the NORC programs continues to be a barrier to comprehensive success of this program. Uh, with the flat funding that currently exists, it doesn't then account for the increasing cost of providing services that have left many of these programs underfunded. Um, we actually, one of our NORCs is one of the uh, ones that City Council picks up um, because it was left out of the RFP. This is a NORC in Danny Drums District. Um, we want to emphasize a few pieces of how we can, that we believe um, City Council can work with DIFTA to improve the existing NORC program in addition to obviously looking at more funding opportunities. So as the NORC, since the NORC program was created, DIFTA and SOFTA, SOFA have shifted the programmatic expectation towards evidence-based health and wellness programming. In order to facilitate these programs, NORC staff need additional training in the new evidence-based programming. Currently, the budget does not provide sufficient funding to train both staff while maintaining other vital NORC services such as case management and transportation. We are urging DIFTA and SOFA to invest in training uh, to ensure that experienced NORC staff can provide these innovative and new evidence-based programs in the existing uh, NORC programs. We also encourage City Council and DIFTA to explore other opportunities for increased partnerships and shared breast practices among the NORCs in New York City. This could be accomplished through a forum for NORC providers to discuss effective programming and other strategies for engaging external stakeholders. Finally, we would, uh, in order to ease and to ease effectiveness in reporting service units, we recommend that DIFTA provide additional training on unit definitions, uh, recording and reporting. So right now, as every service that's provided, whether it be a meal service, a social activity, or some sort of case management, um, the staff have to report on that unit. And um, there are different systems for both DIFTA and SOFA, and they've also mo uh, modified how the unit reporting has occurred. And this has become very um, burdensome some and comprehensive and difficult for our staff um, as they are trying to just make sure they maintain the programs and which is really their highest priority to provide the services um, and so training for them to understand uh, more about the units reporting and requirements there would facilitate an ease of uh, of this process and allow them to dedicate more time to really managing the programs themselves um, our final thing is, as reflected that Molly spoke about before, um, as a comprehensive social service agency that provides multiple programs, we're very grateful for the investment last year in increased um, uh, uh, salaries for case management um, providers, and this year for the adult protective services programs. But this still presents a challenge for um, an organization that we have social workers that are essentially providing similar services in multiple DIFTA funded programs, but can often be being paid significantly different salaries. This creates an issue for staff retention, for morale, and um, presents a problem for us in having to figure out where within our budget we are going to make up those salaries so that we can maintain an overall um, happy and um, you know, 
staff that feels appreciated for the work they do. Uh, in response to something the commissioner said, uh, or not the, the associate commissioner said, um, they were encouraging that the way that new NORC programs should come about is through communities reaching out to DIFTA or reaching out to city council. And ultimately, there's a lot of seniors in New York City who don't know about NORCs. They don't know that this program exists, so they don't even have the connection to know that they even have an opportunity for this funding that's already limited. And so if that's really the strategy that they see as the most effective to expand this program, DIFTA will need to take responsibility for ensuring that seniors across New York City know that this is an option so that they can then partner with community-based organizations and work together to create these new opportunities. Certainly as a provider, we are there to facilitate that process, but there really needs to be an educational campaign to make sure that seniors even know about this option, which right now um, many do not. Um, so again, we want to thank you all so much for your support this year. It's really you know, been a tremendous year for investing in seniors, and uh, we look forward to continuing in partnership in the future. Hi, my name is Thomas Weber. I'm Director of Care Management at SAGE, Services and Advocacy for JLBT Elders. And also, I want to thank um, this committee for holding this hearing on NORCs. Um, I'm going to spare you the sage boilerplate. <laughs> but um, just start with services for older uh, New Yorkers are crucial and will become even more important to a growing demographic in our city. Every day in this country, 10,000 people turn 65. This gray tsunami will hit New York City. According to live on New York, 20% of New Yorkers will be over 60 by the year 2030. Couple this growing demographic with our city's housing affordability crisis, and it's no wonder that so many of our elders are left with few options where they can grow old safely. And the population of elders who are LGBT will also skyrocket proportionately. We've already seen a surge in the number of LGBT people seeking our services. Our constituent population has more than doubled over the last five years, and I think this is a testament to the penetration of our five SAGE centers across the city and also our NORC program in Harlem. Um, we must do more for our older members of our community, not less. This city pioneered the NORC model, recognizing the need for independent living for our elders. Our city knows that NORCs enable older people to age in place safely. And that's even more true for marginalized older people like LGBT older people. LGBT elders face myriad challenges associated with aging, declining health, diminished income, the loss of friends and family, and ageism. LGBT older adults also face invisibility, ignorance, and fear of harassment, and poor treatment. Yet, they are far more likely to live with these challenges in isolation. We're twice as likely to live alone, half as likely to be partnered, half as likely to have close relatives to call for help, and more than four times more likely to have no children to help. Um, therefore, um, a reduced uh, caregiving uh, network. As a result of these thin support networks, many LGBT older people have no one to rely on. Um, nearly 25% of LGBT older adults have no one to call in an emergency. And proven discrimination adds to the burdens. In a 10 state housing study conducted by SAGE and the Equal Rights Center, we found that same sex couples face discrimination at an alarming rate when seeking senior rental housing. In that study, 48% of same sex couples were subject to at least one form of discrimination. And that's hard to believe that lesbian and gay older couples were discriminated against in at least half of these cases. A lifetime of discrimination has reduced the support networks and economic security of many LGBT older people, leaving our LGBT elders even more vulnerable in housing instability in their later years. LGBT older people face profound challenges in obtaining LGBT welcoming housing, a problem that will increase significantly as the elder population doubles in the next few decades and more out and empowered LGBT people age into their retirement years. As the advocate for LGBT elders, SAGE is working with cities and towns across the country to encourage more LGBT-friendly developments, including NORCs. Here in New York, SAGE receives NORC funding that supports our SAGE Center Harlem. SAGE also launched our five senior centers across the city to reach more LGBT older people who are disconnected from services, but in great need of these services in order to age in place. And we thank the City Council very much for the funding for these, for these centers and for our NORC program. With the support of our non-traditional NORC Sage Center Harlem, LGBT elders of color can access a continuum of care from hot meals to fitness to socialization and case management that enables more LGBT elders in Harlem to age in community and not have to enter long-term care. 
We must ensure that there are more resources like NORCs, more NORCs in this city so that New York City is a place where people can grow old gracefully in the city and in their communities. Our city is aging and it's incumbent upon the city to invest more in models like NORCs so that the Department for the Aging is prepared for the aging of the baby boomers. And it's crucial that the city invests in services and support specifically for vulnerable populations like LGBT elders. Thank you to the City Council for your continued support of our LGBT older adult population. Your support has been instrumental and continues to be instrumental in ensuring that SAGE is there for them. As we look to a growing population of LGBT older people, SAGE looks forward to working with the members of the Council and the Department for the Aging to ensure that more of our city's elders can age in place. Thank you. Uh, thank you for your testimonies and thank you for raising the issue about pay parity. I know that we took a step forward by working with case management agency, but we definitely have to continue that for our senior centers and for our NORCs. And um, I think with our NORC, we have to let the administration know that this is a trend. We need to build, we need to start more NORCs in our city and we need to get the support there. And I'm so glad to hear about the example of Bay Ridge, I forgot, but I'm glad you were here to remind us that that was another one that the council uh, supported because a council member, I think Gentile, yes. uh, raised it. That, a great supporter of yes. Us. yes, so on one hand, council member needs to be the one to also come forward and say, hey, I can use a NORC in, in this part of my district and also working with providers and really getting the word out there. I think um, the terminology NORC is, is uh, getting more familiar to a lot more people. And we hope to see a, a growing number in the city. And I look forward to working with all of you doing that. Okay. Thank you for coming Thank out you. today. And our last panel, uh, we have Rhonda Soberman from Visiting Nurse Services of New York and Hillary Suchin from UJA Federation. Is there anyone else that would like to testify? You can uh, speak to the, the sergeant there. Thank you. Um, all right. Hi. <laughs> Good afternoon. Um, I'm Hillary Stuchin. I'm the Associate Director for Government and External Relations at UJA Federation of New York. Um, established 100 years ago, UJA is one of the nation's largest local philanthropies. Uh, we identify and meet the needs of New Yorkers of all backgrounds. We connect people to their communities, respond to crises in New York and around the world, and support nearly 100 nonprofit uh, organizations serving those that are vulnerable and most in need of programs and services. And JASA and Self Help are just two of them. Um, uh, first, thank you for making this the year of the senior and for the $23 million that have been baseline for DIFTA's really vital core services that um, so many of our clients uh, truly, truly need. And to the council, thank you also for renewing the NORC initiative because without it, you know so many would, would not have these programs available anymore. Um, you've heard quite a bit about NORCs today, so I'll just pull some uh, requests or recommendations from our testimony. So I'd like to just echo the health and nursing services uh, and the funding needed for that and the importance of it within a NORC. Um, as you know, they're among the most valuable to residents, but also the most expensive to provide. Um, and the costs just keep growing due to reimbursement rate changes and other kind of complications within the healthcare system. So while socialization and recreational programs are important factors of, of overall wellness, this small piece of the NORC program has a very large impact in keeping people at home and really achieving the goal of a NORC to connect them with their communities, keep them out of hospitals and nursing homes. Um, so for that, we would encourage that in the next fiscal year, the council try to uh, get uh, $1.12 million appropriated to just specifically healthcare and NORCs. Um, and also further noting the success of NORCs and neighborhood NORCs as a whole, we would ask the council to enhance funding for the existing programs and expand opportunities to allow for more programs citywide. 
uh, because as mentioned, we really do need to keep pace with the demographics of this aging population in our city. Um, we also encourage the council to pursue baseline funding for neighborhood NORCs and really kind of get that program established within the city. Um, there are areas, as you know, where there are significant senior populations, but they have lower density and the people are just as much in need in services. So finally, as mentioned before, the NYSOFA um, grant award should be announced very soon, and we would hope that the council, in conjunction with the administration and DIFTA, uh, would coordinate and streamline the reporting and programming requirements that uh, these varying grants have, because for those who are duly funded, it's a very complicated process, um, to say the least. So uh, that's very brief, but uh, I thank you, and I look forward to working uh, with you and the uh, aging committee, the council, everybody, to try to make this happen and work uh, in the next coming year. Thank you. Oh, goodness. <laughs> Hi, my name is Rhonda Soberman. I'm from the Visiting Nurse Service of New York, and I want to thank uh, you, Chair Chin, and everybody else who's still here, uh, so much for providing us with the opportunity to again speak about how we can improve naturally occurring retirement communities. I'll also make it brief and uh, skip through things, but it's all here in my uh, comments for today. Um, I'm speaking here on behalf of the Chinatown Neighborhood NORC, which I'm sure you're familiar with. Uh, we uh, have sponsored, the Visiting Nurse Service of New York has sponsored this neighborhood NORC since its inception in 2006. While we're very grateful for the City Council for allocating needed funding for the neighborhood NORC and other NORCs and neighborhood NORCs throughout the city in fiscal year 2018, we want to thank you so much for your vision and recognition of the needs of the senior population in New York City and for realizing that NORCs and NORCs are a viable strategy in addressing those needs. Um, the NNORC interdisciplinary approach, which is a tenant of the NNORC model where social workers and nurses work collaboratively on resident health and wellness, is really critical to the success of community living. The inclusion of community residents as volunteers and members of numerous advisory committees provides residents with a voice and keeps them engaged in this important community program that is focused on their social and health needs as well as their future aspirations towards healthy aging in place. Navigating the health and social service world is a major challenge for our members at the Chinatown NMORC who come to receive social services, non-reimbursable health care, education, and the like. Um, we currently service more than 1,000 members and 800 of them are actively engaged seniors and they participate in uh, the activities that we provide which are non uh, reimbursable health education and screenings, social services, and recreational and support groups. You know, before you were asking, how do we measure success? Well, through the surveys and like the health indicators and our Advantage survey, for example, in Chinatown, we identified that there was a rise in colon cancer among the Asian uh, seniors in Chinatown. And what we did was we activated a colon cancer task force where we worked with other members of our community, hospitals, clinics, and all that, brought everyone together, brought the seniors in, even the pharmacies and everything, and we helped people to understand the importance of colon health and getting screened. We had a navigator who helped people go on the day of their colonoscopy, and we were able to show from our outcomes that we increased people's uh, going for those type of tests. So we, we, all of the NORCs find ways of understanding what those specific health needs are in their community and trying to find ways of engaging people so that they can address them. The next thing we worked on was uh, health decision making, uh, health care proxy, and we have an ongoing health care proxy task force with members of the expanded North, commun uh, North community in the Chinatown and the Lower East Side. So these are, these are, this is the power of NORCs and NNORC community where we really can get together, engage people, and make a difference in these metrics in the community that are so important to promoting good health. Okay. Um, our community, as you know, uh, is extremely low by HUD standards, and uh, most of our uh, people are, 62% of our members are over 75, and 25% are over 85. We're really an aging community with people who are extremely low income. 
in terms of health status, uh, the, the people have mobility issues, and we know the challenges living in a neighborhood Newark in a tenement community where a lot of our seniors are living on upper floors in uh, sort of substandard housing things. We work very closely with the landlords, and again, in a neighborhood Newark, there's not one landlord that you deal with, you're dealing with multiple landlords. But we go in and we try to make, uh, do housing uh, evaluations and, uh, and, and try to make the necessary changes so that we can enhance successful community living, because this is where our constituency wants to stay, in Chinatown. Um, during the fiscal year 2017, the city council funds were used to partially s support all of the staff that we have at our NORC, and without that funding, we would not be able to continue. So we are very uh, hopeful that in 2018, we will be able to continue to receive that support. Um, and f as far as recommendations are concerned, we want to continue to expand. We, we were hoping that you'll continue to expand the important work and the efforts of other successful NORCs and NORCs across New York City uh, by, number one, baselining NORC uh, appropriate financial resources. It is very upsetting to, you know, it's June 30th is coming up and I'm starting not to sleep at night, uh, waiting to find out what our allocation would be. We really need to be able to, you know, be there for our community and we have to know that we're funded and we can do that as well. So baselining is really very important. Uh, Nursing services, I think everybody here, vi visiting nurses in a unique uh, situation because we are running a, a neighborhood NORC, but we are also the health partner in many of the NORCs that have come to testify in front of you today. And uh, unfortunately, because of changes in healthcare reimbursement, uh, we, as I reported last year, we can no longer provide those services without some form of compensation. And we feel it's so critical, and we see such a difference when we have the nursing services in place, because the nurses are there not only to support the residents who live in a community, but even the staff who are struggling with this. It's really important to have this perspective. When people get nursing services through Visiting Nurse Service of New York, it's not only the nurse that's there at their location, it's all of the services and support and everything that comes from an organization like us. So these services are really, really important. Um, sorry. I, I wanted to, I, I attached for you to look at a letter that we received from a family member of a, of a member of our neighborhood, Nork, who went from uh, a active and involved member to having some difficulties and how we navigated that person till the day that they died. And the family uh, lived far away, and if it wasn't for our involvement, uh, it, it could have been a very different story. The person ended up getting the services in their home and community. Uh, we took the liberty of translating it so that you, for those who don't uh, read Chinese, uh, and I think it's a compelling story because this is what all of my colleagues who are here do. We really make a difference. We really help people to stay in their home and community by being their family member. And, and, uh, and so the, these funds are so critical to our being able to continue this mission. Um, community, the, other, the third thing that I'm asking that you consider is uh, to obviously expand this program as much as possible within the confines of the finances that are available, because we know, particularly in immigrant and low-income and high-risk communities, this is really critical to getting people on their feet and maintaining them in the best way. Communities fortunate enough to have NORCs have an anchor that supports successful aging in place through the provision of a wide range of services at critical moments in the lives of their members, and that's the letter to sh just show you what that was all about. Um, but uh, there are many communities with a significant aging population that don't have NORCs. For low-income and immigrant and frail population, this can be the difference between living their senior years engaged in a community that supports them and det or deteriorating in isolation in apartments or moving to costly nursing homes. We are committed to working with the City Council, DIFTER, and other community partners to ensure that every community that needs an, an, a NORC or an NORC can success successfully support one. Uh, as I said before, we have been a real, uh, we, we are so committed to the NORCs that we help a lot of the NORCs. So you asked before, well, how do people, do people, does the 
stiff to go out and look for places. Well, a lot of a lot of people in the community come to visiting nurse service to ask about it, and we help and guide them and uh, help them to get grants so that they can do the Advantage survey, and these surveys are really important because they help them to identify, do they have a, the right number of people in a community to become an org? What kinds of needs does this community have? Not er every community throughout the city is different. Their needs are different, their priorities are different, and we have to really make these programs be responsive to what's going on. And we work to help uh, communities be able to do that. So in conclusion, as we prepare to celebrate the 150th anniversary of the birth of our founder, Lillian Wald, and also my colleague back there from Henry Street Settlement, it's her founder too, uh, her mission and vision to serve those in need in the comfort of their home and community is as relevant and critical today as it was more than 100 years ago. NORCs and NORCs are the natural outgrowth of the long-standing commitment the City Council has demonstrated to help our seniors live and thrive in the communities they call home. We thank you for your continued investment in the successful NORC model and look forward to working with you to ensure that our seniors have the appropriate nursing and social services that they deserve. Thank you. Thank you for your testimony and thank you for your passion in, in working in this area. And next year, we're going to have to focus on NORC programs, um, making sure that every neighborhood that wants one, we can help them build. It's so important to get the funding baseline so that the council, we can use our money to help do the feasibility studies. And, and that's why we were able to get three uh, NORC programs started, one in Staten Island, Far Walkaway, and in Bay Ridge. Right. Um, but we need the administration to baseline the funding. So we look forward to working with all of you, thank you. Uh, to make that happen. And thank you to all of you for the great work that you do for our seniors. And uh, we look forward to working together. Thank you. thank you for coming out today. And just know that all of your investment really makes a difference. We're here to prove to you that this is worthwhile and that the money is very well spent. You know, thank you. With that, the hearing is adjourned.